I'm Cave Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic book show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we're taking a closer look at Deadpool, issue number 14. What does the Civil War II mean for Wade Wilson and his mercs for money? Can they stay together, or will they too be at each other's throats? Well, let's hop on into the newest comic and find out together, shall we? Alrighty then, so as we join the story, old Wade is hanging out in the monster metropolis with his wife, the Queen of the Monsters, a character who kind of got lost in the shuffle over the last little while. She even says Deadpool hasn't come to visit her in a fortnight. It's even weirder because when last we saw this character, we found out that she was actually two-timing Wade with Jack Russell, and also Duggan has almost several times now implied that she might be turning bad any day now, only for nothing like that to happen. Why is Deadpool even in the monster metropolis right now? Well, he wants his wife's help and also use of her army for a little bit because wouldn't you know a bunch of Celestials are attacking New York City right now. These events, of course, you could learn more about if you were reading the main Civil War II series. Deadpool's personal team, the Mercs for Money, already have their boots on the ground, and while the Avengers deal with the major threat, these guys go around and attempt to save as many people as they can from the destruction. They actually manage to pull together as a team all these weirdos and losers and save quite a few people, but once the dust settles, they don't get any congratulations for their hard work. There's actually a really funny scene where uh, Deadpool sees Doctor Strange and all the magical characters pull together. Deadpool says, don't worry everyone, either this is going to work and we're all going to be fine, or the universe is going to be totally rebooted again and we're all going to get new number ones and everything will also be fine. The final insult to the Mercs for money is when Deadpool and his wife get invited to the big fancy post-battle party at Stark Tower and they get left very much in the cold. Geez, they are just piling on the bad boss vibes for Deadpool, aren't they? At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't even offer health insurance or vision. And I mean, it's not even like Deadpool particularly enjoys the Stark Tower party or anything. He pretty much puts his foot in his mouth right away by making fun of Ulysses, the new inhuman who can see the future, going, man, that's bunk. Who can actually see the future? The future is random. It's always changing. It's crazy. Kind of just like me. The irony being that Ulysses is actually a big fan of Deadpool and is kind of heartbroken that the guy made fun of him. You know who's not heartbroken, though? J. Jonah Jameson and the very Fox News-esque fact channel because they heap all the praise on Deadpool for saving the city. It's after this insult, the Mercs for Money decide that maybe they would be better served going out on their own and starting their own mercenary company. Hmm, and right before the Mercs for Money are getting their own spin-off series. How interesting. Of course, they are piss broke right now and none of Deadpool's checks to them have cleared, so they have to go look for financial advice with none other than Cable. Yeah, Cable is hanging out there. They ask him how he gets his money. It's simple, really. When you have a time machine, you just go back in time with a very small amount of money, put it in your bank account, and wait for it, you know, collect interest. Of course, Cable's been trapped in the year 2016 for a little bit now, and he's down to his last million dollars, a million dollars that the Mercs really, really hope he'll, he'll invest in their new endeavor. Deadpool number 14 feels a lot less like a proper Deadpool story and a lot more like a backdoor pilot for a Mercs with Money solo book, which is going to be happening anyway, and they already got themselves a little six-issue mini, so I don't see the point right here right now. It's not even that I don't like those characters. I do. I think they're funny and interesting interesting in small doses, it just seems weird, you know? This is a prologue, of course, to a much bigger Civil War II tie-in story, and I can only assume it's going to see Deadpool going up against his own people, which should be interesting, especially as we've seen them become, you know, a lot closer together and work better as a team. Well, Deadpool really doesn't seem to know them all that well. Also, and this is more of a characterization complaint, but it seems weird after all the growing together Deadpool and his mercs did in the previous arcs, they kind of dump them pretty quick right here, right now, for some pretty tiny slights in the greater scheme of things. Well, what you gonna do? It was still funny, it still had good action, I would give it a 7. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video, I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer, or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you wanna like or subscribe. And if you wanna support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.